This episode of the Masonic Roundtable is brought to you by our good friends at Masonic Revival. Uh, one of the most awesome things that I think Edgar has come up with so far has got to be his apron case. John, you uh, you just got one, didn't you? No, but I've had my eye on one for a long time because, no joke, I've looked at all the other cheap knockoffs that are out there, and I don't know, it's it's sturdy. It's compared to everything else that's out there. It's uh, something I've been, I've had my eye on for a long time. Santa, are you listening? Hint, hint. <laughs> one of the, one of the coolest things I think about uh, Edgar's apron case is just his his attention to detail. Uh, he's got square and compasses on the zipper of it. You shut like, the front door. I don't believe it. Yeah, that's that's how how awesome this thing is. So, um, yeah, Edgar, if you're listening, uh, I mean Santa, Santa, Santa Alejandro, if you're listening. Um, we, we absolutely love your stuff. Edgar does does a whole bunch of awesome um, ties and um, pins and humidors and all sorts of great stuff. And he actually uh, he actually has some new arrivals. So go check out www.masonicrevival.com uh, and take a look at his, his new stuff. He's got some sales going on through the holidays, so check it out. Isn't it time for a Masonic Revival, John? Yeah. It is. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the Masonic Roundtable, a weekly program where Masons from around the world get together to talk about Masonic news and opinions in a friendly and social manner. As a reminder, the thoughts and opinions expressed here are solely the opinions of the participants and do not represent any Grand Lodge statements or positions. Make sure you keep your conversations open for the public and on the level. To interact with us, send questions and comments to our Twitter page our Facebook event page for episode 238, Freemasonry and Pop Culture, or, or for you cool guys, uh, in the chat running alongside this YouTube video live. So welcome to all of our live listeners. Uh, you know me by now. My name is John Ruark. I'm a past master of the Patriot Lodge number 1957 in Fairfax, Virginia. We have a full cast tonight, so let's go to Robert for his introduction. Hey, Robert Johnson. Uh Past master here, current sitting secretary of Space Novum, uh, 1183, under dispensation. Rock on. Mike the intern, how you doing? Great. Uh, Mike Hambrick here, uh, the new junior deacon and lodge education officer for Triandria Lodge number 780 in Rock Creek, Ohio. Juan Sepulveda, good evening. Hello, good evening, brothers. Juan Sepulveda here from the Winding Stairs Freemasonry Podcast and a brother from Orange Blossom Lodge number 80 in Chile, Kissimmee, Florida. Brisk. Chile is relative. <laughs> and last but not least tonight, the Jason Richards. The Jason Richards, a past master of Acacia Lodge number 16 in Clifton, Virginia, and member of the Colonial Lodge number 1821 in Washington, D.C. Good to be here. Awesome. As usual, thank you to all the patrons who've been uh, supporting the show the past couple months. If you want to go check that out and help support this show, keep it running, get some new tech, uh, go on over to patreon.com slash the Masonic Roundtable and you know, help us out. We've got some goodies lined up. We're working out the logistics and uh, the, all the fun stuff in the back end, but for our patrons, you'll see that really soon. So thank you not only to to our patreons but to all the supporters over the years uh, supporting pins and all our crazy uh schemes that we've had so this has been a, a fun ride hey so for uh for the folks who have signed up for patreon and for the folks who who haven't um we just got a sneak peek of our new patreon exclusive tmr pin from edgar gonzalez this morning and it's amazing uh, so if, quite honestly, something not like you've ever seen before. No, but, it's I I designed it to be different, and Edgar took it and ran with it, and it it looks incredible. So, um, you if you want to check it out, you can't. But <laughs> if you want to get it, come and uh, come and support us on Patreon, and as soon as. They're out of production. Uh, we'll make sure we get them into your hands. You know what? We might. We might. How about this? How about we drop a picture 
just on the Patreon page. Just for those uh, patrons to see. We will we will drop a picture of the prototype on the Patreon page. I'm still tweaking it, so it's going to look different from the picture when we're done. But I will drop a, a picture just for the Patreons. Yep, so don't share it with anybody. This is one of the perks you get. You get first dibs on anything we do. So you will need to take this. All of our Patreons need to take this as a Masonic secret. You got it. Don't oh, share it with anybody. That's what we're going to do now. We, I think we offered a Masonic secret just once before, and that was at TMRCon 300. I think we did a, a Masonic secret, but I can't even remember what it was. That's how great of a secret we kept. It was good, though. That's true. Yeah. Oh, that's, you're going to kill me because it was a really good one, and I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it was too good. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good and we're secret from ourselves well, I, the, i'm 200 percent sure it had something to do with our trip oh i remember it now oh, yeah yeah only one other person probably knows about that richard <laughs> but yeah so this pin oh is that killer. one yeah. yeah this pin is killer we're turning into the howard stern show by now we're, we're talking about things nobody understands <laughs> <laughs> But no, hey, so, uh, we should probably talk about masonry pop culture. Yes. I agree. Good yeah. stuff. Okay, so this week's topic: Freemasonry pop culture. Uh, actually, fun fact: my very first lodge presentation was on Freemasonry and pop culture. Uh, for those listeners uh, who followed our journey of like why we joined Freemasonry, one of my first exposures to Freemasonry was Homer Simpson, season six of uh, The Simpsons, joined. And became the head of a Masonic-like organization called the Stonecutters. So uh, let's start with that. The Stonecutters was my first exposure. I was probably in high school at the time. And I didn't have any masonry in my family. And so um, watching that early on in The Simpsons, uh, I, was, I was fascinated. Like, oh, it's, it's super secret. And they made fun of you know, the, uh, the perks and benefits that masonry gives its members to include you know, a little ring that you can... Uh, hold up to the the soda machine, and if you just turn your turn your ring, you get a free soda, or you know the the the, the traffic parts for you, and all that good stuff. So, um, was keeps the metric system down. We do, we do. <laughs> Great song. Uh, and so, unfortunately, masonry is not quite as cool as the stone cutters, but it's still it's still a good time. So that was. That was my first pop culture reference. We have our own types of stones of shame. <laughs> yes, that's true. So how about this? We go around Robin, and we'll just keep bringing up just kind of the first one that comes to mind, and we'll we'll see where we end up by the end of the night. So I'm going to hand it off to Robert for his next Freemasonry and pop culture reference. All right. So my first exposure to it was in a comic book. Uh, I think I wrote about this a long time ago um, for Midnight Freemasons, but. Uh, one of my favorite books, uh, Alan Moore and um, uh, Kevin O'Neill did uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Um, so this is number one. Oddly enough, this was not the one that, uh, that I read first. The one I first read was actually the second one, which uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Volume 2 by Alan Moore. And this one won quite a bit of awards. It was, uh, it's, it's about the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, who, of course, if, you, if you're unfamiliar, it's like all the coolest literary people in one book, and they, they live in a world, they work for an organization that takes care of world threats. Uh, we have uh, Mina, who is, of course, uh, the interest of Dracula, um, the Invisible Man, Alan Quartermain, who is the, uh, the great granddaddy of adventurers. He's like... Uh, <clears throat> Indiana Jones, but then you've also got like uh, Mr. Hyde and, and the organization they work for. Actually, I'm trying to find a picture of uh, one of them, but in this one, it's these guys fight the uh, invasion of Mars. So it's uh, it's really cool. And the organization uses a square and compasses in a fellow craft version now, I would tell anybody out there, these are wonderful books, but uh, definitely don't let your kids read them. Um, lots of mature content, nudity, and language, but um, a really good set of books. I'm trying to find, but there's like five of them. There's, uh, But all of them have this 
this organization where the square encompasses is on the, except in the last one, it looks like. I would show you some of the screen caps in these things, but the, uh, the imagery could be much for public. Um, but yeah, this is a wonderful, gosh darn, this, it's amazing set of books. Alan Moore is a, a known occultist and writer, um, and the Masonic symbols first appeared when I saw them in this book, and I didn't put it together until after I was a Freemason, so kind of interesting. So compared to the movie, the book better? Well, I, I guess so. In the movie, there's a fun, there's a bunch of stills where they show the square encompasses too, like around the doorways and things. And of course, in the movie, they they battle uh, Moriarty, who is the main bad guy, which is is incredible. Um, I love those kind of books. In fact, uh, Mike Hambrecht and I um, share well, birds of a feather there. <laughs> yeah, up right on my shelf right here is a set of books that I've been going through reading with my kids. It's the Sherlock Holmes books. Um, and the return of Moriarty and things, and and Mike Hambrick actually lent those to me. Um, but yeah, uh, that that was my first uh, pop culture reference with Freemasonry was was this. Mm -hmm. And the books are way better than the show, the the movie. If you watch the movie, it's super tame. Um, these it was okay. It was yeah. entertaining in like it, high school and college. Oh, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, but Tom I mean, Sawyer character though is the the worst thing they ever did to it. <laughs> yeah, the Tom Sawyer character they had to Americanize it a little bit, right? But like, they follow these these people who are essentially... like Steve McQueen in The Great Escape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's they're right. they're immortal, right? And so Alan Quartermain never dies. Um, Mina, he his love, does in the movie. but he doesn't because the heart boy. of Africa. It, it, so, mm -hmm. so. Um, but like in the in the com so if you could imagine in the comic book later on Alan Quartermain gets addicted to heroin and like I mean he lives through the 60s and it's a wild time for him and uh, it's just a, a really wild set of books so open mind definitely start when you read those but but awesome not books. for your children not definitely <laughs> nope not at all watch the movie cool all day yeah. don't let them buy the comic books <laughs> not at all. But for those interested, there's a giant omnibus out there that has almost all of them. I think all but 1969 is in there. Yeah, check this out. I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay. He has it right at the ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need you to explain what an omnibus is. A really big bus. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bus that is flies and it's on you. identifying. Oh. oh, look at that. Yeah, that's that's awesome. pretty. Good stuff. Yeah, and I have to shout out to my buddy, uh, brother Joseph James, who actually works in the industry. And one day he said, hey, come to my car. It's raining outside. I don't want to get this all wet. And he gave it to me. And I was like, you kidding me? So it was cool. <laughs> so I love you, Joe. I'm sorry. I love you, Jeff. Um, Jeff James is uh, an incredible dude and, and loves comic books more than I do, which is scary. <laughs> Speaking of comic book lovers, Mike the Intern, what's your next Masonic pop reference? So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna combine two of them actually, and because it, it touches with the Alan Moore again, but because it does, there's a, a another similarity that I'll just toss them together. But there's From Hell, which was actually an Alan Moore comic or graphic novel, and then because this movie is a Jack the Ripper. Uh, storyline that revolves around the Masons in it in the exact same way that the movie Murder by Decree, which is a Sherlock Holmes story, does. I mean, they're almost identical. Um, but uh, it's it's really good. I actually uh, first saw the uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes one when I was a teenager, and it always impressed me uh, when... Uh, Sherlock Holmes does these uh, signs and gets this guy all kind of flustered and then shakes, does the a secret handshake with him and then takes his ring off. And it's this ring, it's got a flat surface on the one side. Well, he pulls it off and he opens it up and there's and it flips. And on the inside, hidden in there, is the uh, square encompasses. And... Uh, after he goes through all those steps, uh, Watson says to him, what's all this mumbo jumbo? You know, 
And he explains that those were the signs of the 33rd degree Mason. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. But um, yeah, the from hell is actually much better though than uh, the uh, Sherlock Holmes murder by decree in my opinion, but still just as flawed in the storyline. True. However, uh, if you do watch the movie, Try not to watch it with your wife because it gets there's some like ritualistic stuff that may or may not be similar, but it's either an awkward conversation nonetheless. <laughs> this is true. Uh, I don't no. know. I, I I watched it with my wife and she was like, "Wow, you want to set a house on fire?" <laughs> and I was like, "Let's do it, baby." Yeah. <laughs> watch the world burn. Yeah, really great. I I love that movie, Mike. Uh, I, yeah. I didn't even it didn't even cross my mind, but when you mentioned it, it was like. Top notch and totally on a new level after you become a Mason and you watch it. Oh yeah. Cause I, I watched it long before and it never really meant anything. But once I joined, I was like, Oh my God, I see the things I see, it. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. And there was more in there that you see after you know what you're looking for. I'm going to have to rewatch it. Cause I think I saw it like in high school or, or college or something. I was kind of like, eh. Nice. All right, Juan Sepulveda, over to you, buddy. All right. Well, when we started discussing this uh, this topic, I started trying to remember what was the earliest time that I remember seeing some Masonic stuff. And before I was a Mason, I wasn't necessarily seeing much, and things would kind of like pass me by, like with National Treasure, that sort of stuff. Like I would hear about it, but only think about it as a part of the plot, not think too much about it. Um, and I kept on thinking and I, I know that there were many instances of pop culture after I joined Masonry where Masonry is mentioned and people kind of like told me, oh, there's this movie or there's this book and that kind of stuff. So those I kind of expected to come across, but the most exciting ones have been the ones that I, I just come across them. Nobody's ever told me. I've never seen it anywhere. I'm like, oh my God, did you catch that? And I'm going to show a screenshot in a minute. There's a popular TV show called Mad Men. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, it is about Madison Avenue ad agencies and the drama that goes behind it. And it's a very, it's a show that I've watched at least two times on its entirety. But the first time I watched it, there's an episode where one of the characters, Ken Cosgrove, he's one of the ad men. Uh, one of the salespeople from the from the advertising agency, and he is pretty much obligated to be courting one of their highest clients. So he has to um, pretty much do whatever this car company wants with him. So they take him on, they take him hunting and shoot him in the face and blow his eye out, and he still has to pretty much stick to you know, pampering these people. He gets on a car accident uh, because he's driving these people around and they cover his eyes while he's driving and he crashes. Well, on that specific scene, on a split second, I realized, oh my God, I think I saw a Masonic ring. And I'm going to show you now the, the still from that, um, from that show, where's my button? Do, do, do. All right, tell me. Can you see my screen? Yep, there it is. All right. These are the hands that come from behind him while he's driving and prevent him from seeing, so they get in a crash where he like breaks his leg or something like that. Uh, but that jokester happened to be a mason. I thought that was super exciting. It was super difficult to, to get the screen capture. <laughs> Because I kept on pausing and rewinding, pausing, and rewinding until I finally got it. Uh, now, in that same show, towards the end of the, and I'm not, I don't, I don't want to spoil much for those who still want to watch this show, but there is a transition where some partners leave, some very important characters leave the the show, and they move to a new building. So as they're going you know rummaging through the old things of one of the main partners uh it's a very sad scene because they're reminiscing about this man and how important he was and just as the scene is about to cut to the next thing this man holds 
a trowel up and says to the to the lady that he's talking to, he says, know any Masons? And that's the end of the scene. Like, it has nothing to do with anything. Very obscure. Very obscure. Uh -huh. But it reveals, like, that one of these main characters was a Mason all along. And interestingly enough, you have here the full spectrum of the brothers we encounter. We have some people who are, you know, jokesters, pranksters, you know, careless, abusive, you know, uh, unkind, all of those negative things. And at the very end of the spectrum, you have this man who had, you know, passed away, who was an egg, an exemplary human being who had all the virtues uh, that a man should have and that a mason should exemplify. So I thought that was a really, really cool, you know, bow at the end of, uh, of a show for me. Very nice. That, that reminds me a little bit of um, Edgar Allan Poe's The Cask of Amontillado, right? Because we talked about that in one of the early, uh, other episodes. Um, but uh, this guy like, says, are you, are you a mason? And he pulls out a trowel from his um you know inside of his coat as like evidence like yeah yeah of course i'm a mason look see i carry a trowel around with me and that seemed to be good enough um you know uh proof obviously that wouldn't fly today or even fly for real uh you know speculative freemasons but i mean yeah like <laughs> anybody who's held those things those things are sharp yeah, i'm not like, gonna let me, let me just keep that around. let me just keep that in my pocket and then like impale myself every chance i get uh, <laughs> no thanks i'm good <laughs> it's like a reference to that, though. Okay, uh, let's see, Jason. All right. Um, so one of my first encounters with with masonry and pop culture, I actually had to do with the Shrine. So I'm a, a huge fan of music, having you know played music, played in bands, been a DJ, um, you know, in a, in a past life. I, uh, you know, was really into things like uh, like music videos. And one band that uh, that I think is seriously underrated is the band OK Go. Um, great, great rock band. They they have a really unique style, um, and you know them because their um, music videos are some of the most innovative videos in in music today, whether it's uh, ginormous Rube Goldberg machines or dancing on treadmills, like they just, they, they do all sorts of uh, amazing things. So if you're ever interested in good music, but, but amazing concept videos, uh, check out OK Go because they, they consistently um, just bend the art of the possible, but um, their, their first, uh, their first um, single uh, from from the band was something called "Get Over It," and that was that was back before um, they really stepped into their own with uh, with their second album. Um, and you know, here it goes again, where they're dancing on the treadmills. Uh, for this video, it's actually uh, you know as as close to a stereotypical MTV music video as as they get. Uh, but in the, it actually takes place in a shrine hall. And if you uh, pause right at the uh, right at the proper moment, um, you can see the wall of you know past potentates or whatever. And the uh, the four band members are actually uh, in uh, you know dressed as past potentates with uh, with. Fezes with the Shriners emblem on them, um, and so I remember just seeing that real briefly, and I was like, "Wait, what?" Um, and you know, having to having to go and you know pause the video at the at the right time just to uh, just to to get a glimpse of that. And I thought I thought that was uh, that was kind of funny. Uh, I don't believe any of them are actually affiliated with uh, with the organization, but uh, that was my first. Uh, entry into the world of, of Freemasonry and Shriners and pop culture. Very cool. Um, back to me, I guess. I think uh, I'm going to take a more modern spin on 
the the next Freemasonry pop culture thing, which is actually, you know, now in, in modern, modern pop culture, which would be um, the Lodge 49 show on AMC. So AMC also did Mad Men. Uh, AMC does a great job with uh, character development, and story arcs, and um, really, really good, <clears throat> uh, deep, engaging shows. And uh, I was a little skeptical when they announced this Lodge 49 show, uh, especially that the synopsis was some like, you know, bleach bot blonde surfer dude is trying to like find himself and stumbles into like this pseudo elk pseudo uh, Masonic lodge <clears throat> to kind of find himself. But uh, while like any good series that starts off has a, a very slow beginning, there was a couple twists in the middle of the season and it just started going, um, going crazy from there. So uh, while it has, um, some weird twists and turns and some great cameos. The, the thing I found fascinating from a, a, a popular culture thing is it really talks, it, it does talk a lot about the heart of fraternal organizations in general, which is really not spoken of in, in 2018 popular culture as a whole, right? Because um, Masons are usually uh, iconified via fezes or, you know, you guys trying to murder people, right? But covering their eyes while they're driving, right? But now this actually covers the heart of what a, what is a fraternal organization, what are the challenges of the decline of fraternalism, and more importantly, uh, for those who take it seriously, what new avenues can be opened up, what doors can be opened up to the neophytes uh, who are trying to better themselves through fraternalism vice uh, the uh, the old boys club. So, um, you know, we've we've talked about that, and I know some other podcasts have done some interviews with some of the directors. But it's it's definitely worth checking out if you have any interest in Freemasonry or or fraternalism in general. Um, but uh, watch the whole season. Season one is done. It's it's closed. I believe they've been picked up for season two, and uh, it's definitely worth a watch, especially for the alchemical and hermetic references as well. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's cool to see the characters getting into it as well. So. Isn't Paul Giamatti involved in that show? He's like. I think he's an executive producer. Yeah. Yep. Like I don't know him personally, and I have no reason to believe he's a Mason, but I so want him to be a brother. He's worn a ring and other things he's acted in. Well, if he, if he is, if he ever, like, I'm sure there has to be a famous Mason who listens to our show, maybe ten years from now. Paul, listen to me. I'll keep it a secret. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> Give us a call. We'll cut a deal. No, I don't need no deals. I just need to know. <laughs> okay, uh, Robert, how about another one? Well, so first of all, I did end up finding one of these images uh, of the square encompasses that I'll show you here. I don't know. Can you guys see the train there in the background with the square encompass on it? Oh, yeah, look at that. They're like the majest, uh, the queen's secret service. It's upside down. Shut up. Do you have any of the ones that have like the on the uniforms? Yeah, they're scattered throughout. Oh, it's okay. always there. It's like they wear it on the sleeve. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so I have. Uh, I'll go with this one because the other one is is more recent. But 2013, if you guys remember, a show called Sleepy Hollow. Um, they did um, the one of their seasons kind of ended. More Johnny for, Depp. Well, the sh I guess it's a show, though, it wasn't the? Oh, oh, you're talking about the TV show. Yeah, not... yeah, the the TV show that that came out, and so okay. actually, it was so popular uh, that Freemasonry BCY actually has a whole page dedicated to uh, this and the different screenshots. If you guys can see it, so there's a, and it has all these timestamp marks too to see it all which is pretty interesting. Uh, ben Franklin scene uh, right here in the background. You can see the triple tau. Um, the star there, of course, the KT symbol here. Um, and then they have a whole article about it where Ichabod Crane is talking about things, yeah. Rutledge. And the script itself, right. Yeah, it's really kind of a cool article that they put together. Uh, it's... Uh, freemasonry.bcy.ca slash fiction slash sleepy underscore hollow and then uh, check that out or just google it but it, it comes up it's it's on the uh, freemasonry bcy site um, pretty cool that 
you know, the last really two episodes of the show centered around kind of a Masonic conspiracy of sorts, um, but really neat. So I would, I would recommend it. Check it out. Uh, it's pretty cool. So just a little uh, touch on piece with that. Uh, I went to high school with one of the producers of Sleepy Hollow. Coincidence? <laughs> they, they actually called Mike. They were like, Mike, what do we? <laughs> Mike was a consultant. <laughs> they paid him in, in seasons to watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. Okay, Mike. So my next thing uh, isn't really great pop, you know, uh, pop culture. It's the uh, novel, The Lost Symbol. Uh, that was the next thing that I did, you know, and honestly, when I read it back then, I didn't really get it. I mean, there was, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there, but I was more like, What's he trying to get, you know, this symbol and this thing on it, you know, for his head and all that crazy stuff. Um, I actually just listened to it in an audio, an unabridged audio version about two weeks ago. And I remember hitting a few points in there going, oh, my God, he wrote about that. <laughs> Where did he find that? Where did I mean, you know, I'm not going to tell people so they have an idea what's in there. But honestly, there was things I was like wow, I don't remember even hearing it, seeing that when I read it the first time, you know, and it, a lot of it is a lot of symbolism that was in that, um, that I just never even remembered reading about until I heard it this time. So anyway, that's the next one. Wait, there's, there's some flesh there. There's, okay. there's some flesh left on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th when I, when I was joining Masonry, that book came out and I had submitted a petition or it was in the process of being reviewed and nobody in my family knew except for my wife. And when I made it to something happened, I think it was either my birthday or some celebration towards the, towards the end of the year. And I got as a gift, the book, my mother-in-law had, bought that book for me and i looked at her like does she know what's you know what's going on and i kind of like jumped right into that book and like my my mind was blown and at that time i was deep into listening to a brother eric diamond so uh i had a good foundation at least to understand what was happening with like what masonry was all about so it was super exciting to be reading these things and trying to figure out like, Oh my God, like, is this for real? Like, is this what I'm up? You know, is this what's going to happen to me now? So now I have I plans say, for my tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh yeah. <laughs> Especially from that. I will say one more thing too, since you brought, you know, brought up the uh, pieces, it made it, it made it all that more real though to actually have been in the house of the temple after uh, having read it and then listened to it again and going, I know this room, <laughs> you know? So yeah, made it all that much more real. I can still see the blood on the floor. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Uh, Jason. You have another one? All right. So, um, for uh, for my next uh, masonry in uh, in pop culture uh, reference, uh, we have to go uh, somewhere, really anywhere in uh, in time and space with <laughs> my good friend, the Doctor. Um, so for for those of you who uh, get the camera to refocus, there we go. For for those of you who uh, who can't tell just by looking at everything I have uh, in the background. You know, steampunk Daleks and and all. Um, I'm a huge, huge Doctor Who, Who fan. Um, love the show. Um, couldn't really get into um, 
the uh, the old who I'm I'm much more of a new who person, but um, you know there's <clears throat> there's not a lot of of masonry and and Doctor Who per se, uh, but uh, the <laughs> again the <coughs> excuse me Shriners Fez does end up factoring quite uh, uh, quite significantly into uh, the plots every now and then. So here here we have my my first doctor, Matt Smith, uh, doctor number 10, um, who really started the, the Fez gag. Um, so Fez and, and Bowtie. And then if I, uh, if I move over, they've actually, um, they, they've kept the gag running. So there's, um, there's David Tennant in the 50th anniversary special, uh, wearing uh, wearing the fez, being all uh, David Tennanty, and then um, I'm trying to catch up on the new season of Doctor Who. Of course, we have the very talented Jodie Whittaker, the first female Doctor, and uh, a lot of men can't understand that for some reason. And I pity them for it. Uh, but in uh, in an episode for this season, Kerblam, which is I think the best episode I've seen so far of this season, uh, they they play the gag again where um, this uh, this global amazon like entity uh sends her a uh a package and and inside it's uh a fez so that's uh it's it's fun to to see gags like that as they as they persist through through series um and again it's not anything perhaps uh intuitively uh or inna- inherently masonic but uh, it's still a a fun thing to watch in uh in a show and an and experience that that I really like personally. Mike, what did you say in the green room about uh, the origins of said Fez? So yeah, so there is somewhere out there, and I was trying to find it right now, uh, a description of that Fez actually being uh, Masonic, and I'm I still don't see it right now, but I think if I remember correctly now, that it had to do with. The, in the episode when he went down to get it, he was part of it was he was going down a winding stairs, if I'm not mistaken. But I can't be 100% on that right now. But I do know that there is an article out there somewhere. There's actually, if you do some Googling, there's a whole lot about out there whether or not Doctor Who is a Freemason. So I think that was, uh, wasn't that featured in the Midnight Freemasons? Isn't there a, uh, a Todd Creason article on whether or not the Doctor is a Freemason? Whether or not blank is a Freemason is probably a Todd Creason. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> is Todd Creason a Freemason? Let's. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure on that one. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to rule it out. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up, back to me, the show that was a short list show on Adult Swim. By the name of a, a cartoon called Sea Lab 2021 about scientists in an under the sea scientific lab, um, which really they re- rarely saw them do experiments because it was all their wa- wacky antics at the bottom of the sea. Uh, had an episode, <clears throat> uh, episode six of season four entitled Neptunati, where in the very opening scene uh, you see. Uh, a guy lo- wearing like literally like the Fred Flintstone loyal order water buffalo uh, furry, uh, I'm going to mess up the name of the hat, with the horns, but also wearing a Masonic apron with, uh, you know, the all-seeing eye right on the apron. <laughs> and uh, it was great. It's, it's hilarious because he's quoting some ritual and then to, to culminate the ritual <clears throat> has to uh, drink blood out of a skull. Uh, but in order to do that, he has one of those silly straws, and so he's he's got like the the blood going up through the loops of the silly straw, <laughs> and uh, one of one of his um his coworkers walks in while he's he's sipping the silly straw, at a, holding a cup, uh, 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 drinking from a skull. So uh, he's like, "Well, what's all? What are you doing?" He's like, "Uh, it's it's something secret." He's like, "Well, I went in." I'm like, "Oh, well, okay, you already saw it, and you had to promise to keep it a secret." So of course. Uh, he doesn't keep it a secret, and then he exposes it all to the entire crew. So um, if you go go check out Neptunati. Go Google that. I'm sure you'll find it on the YouTube somewhere. Uh, but it's uh, it's another humorous take uh, on what uh, the general public thinks that we do or do we? 
So <laughs> check that out. I think we have time to go around at least one more time. Robert, can you think of another pop culture reference? Yeah, sure. I'm going to share my screen one more time because this way I have the visuals to go along with it. The next one is, uh, of course, Groening's newest adventure, uh, Disenfranchisement. Um, you know, he's got the past. You mean present, Disenchantment? Disenchantment, whatever it's called. It's, it's really a, a quote-unquote great show that I fall asleep to. Uh, <laughs> um, but I did notice, uh, we have a wizard guy who does all kinds of crazy stuff. He's one of the uh, advisors to the King. And, uh, whenever we see him, he's, he's got this apron on. In fact, there's a couple, uh, funny episodes, uh, one episode in particular where he talks about, and he's like, Hey, is he, are, is he coming to the meeting tonight? And, you know, they're joking about it or whatever, but, uh, interestingly enough, uh, another Masonic reference in uh, Matt Groening or Groening, however you say his last name, his show. So it's in two. I wonder if Futurama ever did one with uh, Masonic tie. I would have to figure that out. If you're, if it's you're okay. Guys, I'm going to talk about that next. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm, I'm like in it's outside. All right. So there you go. Uh, that's that's my next one is uh, mm-hmm. disenfranchise, disen, ah, disenchantment. Yeah. All right. Very cool. There you go. All right, Mike, you're up. First, I understand, RJ, why you would consider calling that disenfranchised because, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian, slip. Freudian, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, this was a hard toss up here, but I'm going to go with uh, uh, The Man Who Would Be King, uh, by, which was uh, Rudyard Kipling's book. But they, the thing that I actually got me in it was the movie. And Honestly, it was after I had petitioned, somebody had uh, suggested that not only was Roger Kipling a um, Freemason, but that uh, this movie is, was heavily uh, laden with uh, Masonic symbolism and uh, quite a bit of the plot is around Masonry. So I had to watch it. And yeah, in the very beginning, I see things, you know, uh, there's a square and compasses when and peachy who's you know we probably wouldn't consider him much of a mason today uh <laughs> tries to steal um rudyard kipling's watch you know and uh on the fob is the uh is a all-seeing eye square and compasses deal and uh he gives that back and then ends up sean connery ends up wearing that around his neck but i won't go into all the details but it's really it's a good story good movie uh very deep in uh, Masonic stuff. And I mean, yeah, some of it's a real stretch. Uh, the very fact that uh, they drag it back to Alexander the Great being uh, a Freemason also. But anyway, good movie. Hey, wait a second, though, Mike. Yeah. Alexander the Great wrote about the mysteries. He said anybody who's anybody in the world yeah. went through the mysteries. So maybe he was. Okay. I mean, Nate, not a Mason, but he but went he through, the through the mystery school. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I'm, just, I'm not saying it's totally a stretch. It's just that that's what's been quoted on it, it being a stretch. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, Juan? It's the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the other one I wanted to mention is a movie by that has uh, Jake Gyllenhaal it's called The Prisoners this is another one of those instances where I happen to notice the uh, a symbol within the movie uh, I was trying to remember it's been a while since I've seen this movie I know that the premise of the movie is that there's uh, this man who is a cop and there's a celebration in his home and all of a sudden the kids are kidnapped one of the ch- either one or two children are are kidnapped like from their front house from the front of their house and the whole movie is him trying to find out where the kids are who did it and it's it's a dark movie but you see this this character um battling in his mind between good and evil like he has a suspect that he wants to just completely destroy I don't want to spoil this movie for people because it's a really good movie. Um, but 
he wears a pinky ring and it's a square and compasses. So there are many, many scenes in which you can see the square and compasses. Um, I, I'll show you a picture of it. And let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. It has a Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal, Viola Davis, and the character, he's a police officer, and there's no mention of masonry in it. There's nothing other than the ring. Um, and I, when I was doing some research to try to find out if the actor himself was a Freemason, but there's an interview that I listened to in which he very clearly says that he is not, uh, but he, it seems like he's seen this pattern where there are a lot of people in law enforcement who belong to the craft. So he he thought to, as part of his character development, to incorporate his membership into a fraternity other than that of the uh, of the police. So it's that was that was another one of those instances where I was really hoping that he was a brother. Like, does that happen to you too? It's like, oh man, I really hope he's a brother. You know, not that we're gonna run into them you know anytime and you know chat with them but but you might i don't know but cool. that's that's the one it's called the prisoners and it's from 2013 for those interesting cool thank you and jason all right so um i'm going to talk about futurama uh, the the trifecta of uh, Matt Granning uh, greatness. So Futurama actually is one of my favorite cartoon series of all time. I've got the entire box set on DVD, and uh, it uh, it kept me awake on a, a number of of shifts <laughs> when I was working the night shift back years and years ago. So um, not as uh, not as uh audacious as perhaps the the simpsons and the disenchantment um uh you know references but um the shriners again um do make an appearance twice in futurama just in a couple uh side gags so here there's uh there's a party on the beach and you've got a uh, a shrine bot, obviously with a bottle of uh, of liquor. Um, so that's uh, that's one reference. And then the the other reference is actually in a more recent um, episode of Futurama. I think around 2011. Uh, you've got a parade going on. And you've got the the alien Shriners in their little um, mini saucers, as opposed to the mini Corvettes that the Shriners have. Um, and those are those are the only two little side gags that I've been able to figure out or been able to to find throughout all of, of Futurama's history relating to you know, the Shrine and, and Masonry. So not a not a big presence in uh, in Futurama. Uh, not nearly as big of a presence as uh, as the Simpsons and Disenchantment, but still, you know, it's it's in there uh, uh, just uh, just for the folks who who get that quick glimpse and then have to you know go back and say, did I actually see what I uh, what I thought I saw? I was gonna say it's for the nerds, but then that's really primarily their target audience. So yeah, I was gonna say that's all all of Matt's stuff is for the nerds. Very cool. Okay, we have filled up, and there are many, many other topics we could discuss. We filled up an episode tonight of random Freemasonry and pop culture references. We, we did cover the gambit um, of lots of different media and um, a variety of, of decades. We could have gone way far back, uh, but I thought we'd stop uh, and go with what we know, just at least off the top of our head while it's fresh. And I think it's great that everyone had a different perspective, a different um, aspect in which they found freemasonry as they were traversing their entertainment uh, so let's go around for shameless plugs and final thoughts and we'll start with robert to take us home 
All right. Wow. Uh, thanks for watching the show tonight. Um, I love talking about Freemasonry in pop culture. Pop culture in general is, is huge for me. You know, I used to go, I'm the guy who went to uh, the San Diego Comic-Con um, many, many years in a row. Really to the web. All right, my iPhone, I will use to search the web. Um, anyway, I, I loved Comic-Con. I loved the pop culture. And uh, actually, one, one year when I was at Comic-Con, I had on a hat. It was um, a Masonic hat. It had a square and compasses on it. And this guy, like, I mean, it is packed in there, right? And the guy's like walking by. He's like, hey, man, I like your hat. And I was like, what? And he like looks back and he like gives me a sign in this huge crowd of people. And I was like, that was a bro. You know, it was just really kind of cool. So yeah, pop culture, Freemasonry kind of go together. I think, especially with uh, the people of our generation, uh, readers in general. Uh, so it's fun. Uh, if you like Masonic podcasts, Sunday nights, 930, whence came you, new episodes come out. Um, I've started doing them a little bit more closer to the day that I'm releasing them. And that's just due to the fact that my weeks have been filling up quite, uh, quite a lot recently. Um, I don't suspect that we'll change anytime soon because all the holiday seasons. And of course, uh, I will not be having shows uh, the last two weeks of the year. So just want to let everybody know that. Um, thinking about everybody out there, all the fans, everybody listening, everybody who writes in and and helps me on my journey in masonry. And uh, I'm thinking about all you guys and hoping you guys have a, a really great start to your season as, as we come upon uh, kind of the giving season, as it were. So thanks, guys. Coolio, Mike the intern. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoy this stuff. I actually have a lot more to try and find uh, myself out there in this. Uh, uh, I really, after talking about it again, I have to really go back and find another copy of the Omnibus and read that whole uh, <laughs> uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen again. But uh, in any case, uh, I really enjoyed this kind of topic, and I, I know there's so much more we could have covered. Uh, but, you know, we've only got an hour. <laughs> so this is this is the kind of thing that could take months. But, you know, anyway... Uh, Enjoyed having people uh, out there. Hopefully some of you guys got something you want to go look for too. And I'm glad you're, you listen to our show and hope to see you out there. Very cool. Lots of pulvita. All right. Um, I just wanted to mention, Robert, something similar to what you mentioned happened to me at Disney last week. Uh, I was waiting in line to get on Big Thunder Mountain with my kids and you know how the cues they you know you pass people several times right so i was wearing a shirt uh one of my masonic shirts and this brother reached out to me he's like hey i really like your shirt and he gave me a look and then he stretched his hand out and you know we we shook hands and just for a moment like as we we're passing by i was like oh where are you coming from and he was he told me where he was from and uh you know we say goodbye because we didn't have i was in the i was in the fast pass for once uh <laughs> so but it was it was a cool moment it was like these two brothers you know like that song you know pa ships passing in the night and it's like hey that was a cool moment uh and we recognize we recognize the the brotherhood uh so thank you all the brothers who are participating we've had a ton of comments here on the on the youtube chat about different movies shows and and different instances in pop culture where people find uh references to freemasonry if you know any of your own that we didn't cover here make sure to go to facebook or twitter and and share them there so we can keep the conversation going um for those of you who listen to the show uh on your car on your commute or while you're mowing the lawn uh this is one that you might want to check uh, the video go to youtube and if you're not subscribed there make sure to click that button and like they like the like the modern youtubers say make sure to click on that notification bell so you don't miss any of the episodes that pu we put out right there you go all right brothers thank you again once a from the winding stairs don't miss out cyber cyber monday week is almost out tomorrow all the prices go back to regular right now. Some stupid, stupid promotions going on on the one stairs. Go over there. Nice. <laughs> Bye. And Jason.
All right. Fun episode. I love talking about uh, masonry and pop culture, um, especially when it's uh, when it's either satirized or or perpetrated by by folks who don't have a, a real connection to the craft. I think it's it's just interesting to to look at an outsider's perspective on uh, on who we are. So um, thanks so much to everybody for uh, for chatting with us on the YouTube chat uh had a really good conversation loved uh loved hearing about all of uh your adventures with freemasonry and pop culture so keep it up uh keep it going head on over to our patreon site so if you just search the masonic roundtable and patreon uh you can uh, check us out there if you support us as a squire or a knight you've got a prototype picture of the pin you're going to get right now right now on patreon so go check it out see what you think um don't show it to anyone please uh this is just for you so we uh we really appreciate your support uh week in and week out with that I'll hand it back to john all righty let's see back to me that's me uh yeah good show um again we've already had a request in the youtube chat we got to go for like a, a part two of this because it was it's such a good time. And um, again, many, 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 many other references we could go into. Uh, and I think we had a good time kind of peeling apart that. So uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for the conversation in the YouTube chat. And uh, thank all of you listeners for checking us out week after week, getting your weekly dose of Masonic education and especially to all our Patreon and PayPal supporters over the years. So you guys are awesome. And we will see you next week. So thank you very much for watching and keep searching for more light. Have a good night.